Hello everyone. Uh, we thought we'd like to share a little bit of our journey with you. Uh, how we met and our calling and uh, our ministry and just kind of share a little bit about ourselves in this video. So um, we were talking earlier about this and I forgot that Rhonda, we met actually at Camp Pinal in Missouri back in 84, 85. Mm -hmm. So um, do you remember anything about that? Yeah, uh, we're both from Texas. Um, my church normally went to a Texas youth camp, and for some odd reason, uh, the youth group went to Camp Pinal uh, in, was it Racing, yeah, Missouri? Racing, Missouri yeah. That year, and uh, Ronnie's dad was pastoring New Boston. Texas, yeah. Assembly of God in Texas, and his church and youth group came. And that's how we met first time. I remember Ronnie had a broken leg and he couldn't play baseball. And we went over and talked to him. And also he caught my attention because he could play the piano. And I liked the way he played the piano. What about the lifeguard? Tell us about that lifeguard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so at the, the there was uh, swimming pools there. I remember the water was real cold because it's fed from the spring. Yeah, it is. It's very cold. And um, I even in the summertime. Yeah. And um, so we had our time at the pool, the girls, and we had a lifeguard, and she was pretty bossy. I was like, oh my goodness, this this lady is very bossy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not normally <laughs> tuned to stuff like that. But did you want to mention? Well, it turned out that the lifeguard was my mom. So, um, yeah, that's that was quite funny. Later on, we found that out. So, Sorry, Mom, if you don't know that little <laughs> impact of information. Okay. So, um, it, was, it was later on, probably, well, it was in 19... 19 um, yeah, 87, the summer of 87, at Camp Copus in North yeah. Texas. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. Camp Copus. That's actually before we went to the Church of God camp in Weatherford. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we we uh, had camp at our, it was the last year for us to have camp. We were... I'm going to go back to Camp Copus. Uh, okay. At Camp Copus, that would have been in the year we graduated from high school. Okay. And Ronnie was there. Uh, I didn't speak to him much. Um, but his aunt Carol Maxson was ta she took a lot of pictures and uh, she was getting a picture of I think it was Mikey, her son, and Ronnie and someone else. And I was walking by and she grabbed me and she said, "Here, take a picture with us." And so she has a picture of us together. That was 1987. And then, as you were saying, we were at the camp. Well, that would we, uh, have been, yeah, Camp Copus. I worked a year. I didn't go to college right after getting out of. Uh, high school, uh, Ronnie did. You worked yeah. and went to junior college, or yeah, yeah. I went to secular college uh, for engineering that year. So. In Texarkana. Yeah, in Texarkana. So we did. I, we did go to Weatherford. Together. Yeah, that was so, the year. Bef that was the year. The summer before we went to college. Yeah, and you have a picture of me on the piano yes. playing the piano. So yes. Yeah. So, so did, yeah. So describe what song sticks out in your head. Not not Jesus saves or. You know, uh, just over in the glory <laughs> land or something like that. So go ahead. Okay, so like I said, you know, back at Camp Penial, Ronnie caught my eye because he could play the piano. I was kind of novice at it, not very good. But at the this camp before college, um, he would play this song. I didn't know what the name of it was. And it was during the four services would start. And I went home and I told my mom about this redheaded guy who could play the piano and I was able to pick up the tune and I played it. Kind of sounded like a Jewish melody. And then um, after we got married, that was three or four years later, I I was told what that song was. And it was something, I think a song his dad had put together for Royal Rangers. Yeah, something. Called, I Like Mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a, a song in minor. So years ago, back when my dad went to North Texas, uh, as we got saved in Austin, Texas, we moved to a little town called Cooper, Texas, and there was my aunt and uncle, uh, Mike and Carol Maxson. Uh, they pastored a church there. Uh, we had a wonderful time kind of growing up there, but my dad went to pastor church in East Texas, and when we got to the church, there was no piano player, and so I had one little short lesson with the, with the piano player at uh, Cooper Church, and I started playing the piano. That's where I started really learning how to play the piano, and as I say, many of you have heard me say that 
um, I was able to learn a lot of stuff because I could play the piano during the altar service and I could do whatever I want to. And if it didn't sound right, well, you know, so Nobody's what? Just, you know, nobody was paying attention anyway. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we had a, you know, we kind of uh, grew up in church. Both of us did. Um, Rhonda grew up in uh, Mankin Church. Um, Same like God, Trinidad. Jimmy Texas. Munns, um, pastor. And... Um, so when we in 1988 uh, was yes. our first year of o Ozark Bible Institute in Neosha, Missouri. And so we uh, went to school together, and so went to Bible school together. Actually, we didn't know we was going together, um, but we got there, yeah. and um, I fell madly in love with Rhonda. So <laughs> it was it was quite tragic love. Um, our first semester, it's kind of back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda kind of dumped me, you know, three, three times, times, three times, times at it, least three it times. Really, it wasn't for other guys. I really liked Ronnie, and I was just indecisive. Uh, I homeschooled, and we lived out in the country. Um, after we came back from the mission field, I grew up till I was ten, and we lived on a farm out in the country, and I homeschooled. And I, at college, really just enjoyed being friends. I was glad to have a network of friends. And I liked to have, being friends with guys, but I didn't want a commitment. Are and you saying I was in the friend zone? <laughs> you were in the friend zone. <laughs> so, yeah, I dumped him because I was very indecisive. I really liked him. But, you know, I was young and trying to figure things out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the first semester we dated, on and off. And then the second semester, not not at all. And then the second, the, our second year, um, not at all. So, yeah. but it was during the first year. Um, first semester is when I really submitted to the call. Never will forget. It was a. It's actually a uh, evening. Um, our dorm. What do we devotions. call them? Dorm devotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Brother Rogers preached on Gideon. And um, I knelt there on the chair, as we always did at the end of our devotions. And I submitted my life to the to the Lord. And I said, wherever you want me to go, whatever ministry you want me to do. You know, I'll do whatever. So, you know, I, I didn't really submit to the call to preach so 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 much as or youth ministry or things like that. Just the ministry in general. And so, you know, it began a journey. And the, along about the second semester of that same year, um, the uh, who was it? The Sumners. Yeah, the Sumners were there, and they were missionaries to Honduras at the time, and. Um, they were uh, preaching, and at that night I felt the call for missions. And I went to the front and told the Lord that I would um, go to the mission field uh, if He would send me. And so uh, that really started our journey in love to missions, ministry and missions. And uh, uh, both of us actually uh, graduated with a, min a minor in missions, uh, having taken the courses and, and things like that that you have to take to. Um, get that and so um, describe a little a little bit about your call to missions. Yeah so as I said previously uh, my parents were missionaries to Honduras and they worked in an orphanage and we came back when I was around 10 years old and so I had um, been raised there in that culture and then my parents always hosted Missionaries, missionaries knew that they could stop by Henry and Linda Martin's house in Corsicana. Do you do you remember some of those missionaries? Yeah, we had uh, uh, Norman and Kara Islander came yeah. numerous times. Evangelist missionary Jack Reed from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, he worked in Oaxaca, Mexico. He came, and then we had um, missionary evangelist uh, who lived in Mexico, who um, the Dominguez family. They would come. Um, we had people that we had worked with in Honduras uh, when they visited states um, come and visit us. So our home was always open to missionaries. I grew up hearing missionary stories, living it, and I knew as a young lady and a young person I didn't want to grow up and just really be sitting on the pew, just happy to go to church. I wanted to be involved and didn't know exactly what that would be. Um, at the age of 10, I received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and it really made an impact in my life. And I really had some awesome Sunday school teachers who really uh, encouraged us to study the Word. And so um, I had a desire to serve the Lord, and not exactly knowing what that would look like, but I was willing. Yeah, that's the first thing that a person has to do whenever they're mm -hmm. submitting to the call of ministry 
or and or missions yes. um, missions is ministry and is to really have a willing heart and that's really was our um, heart back then and it is still is today but yes. it was back then to do whatever the Lord called us to do and so through Bible school along about the third year actually I went to uh, the Philippines uh, on a short-term missions trip uh, for yes. two months uh, under MAPS and worked with um, Rick and Larice Shell. Uh, Rick's gone on to be with the Lord and, and uh, Larice Shell is <clears throat> excuse me, working in the missions department, at, uh, some department in AGWM. Even today I've talked to her. But they had a real impact upon my life and that missions trip really revolutionized. It changed my life. It, it started a trajectory of, of ministry and missions and and keeping missions in the forefront of our minds. So um, I went there, you know, experienced that in the Philippines. We, we landed in um, uh, Manila, and then we traveled eight hours north to uh, Vegan, a town called Vegan, uh, just uh, an hour or so sh uh, s uh, south of Logos, um, uh, in Logos Norte, in, um, in, on the island of um, uh, Loag. Uh, oh wow! Wow, I'm getting a little bit lost here. You need to pull your pictures out. Yeah. So, anyway, spent time there. We were there for to help start to help plant this church. Our portion was the uh, tent revival and things like this to kick it off. And so they had already been there a year, working Bible studies and things like that, um, working with people. And so we had our tent revival. Had a, had a, a minister come from America. Um, to preach the tent revival and we went on for two weeks in that tent revival it was awesome uh, we saw some strange things some demon possession we saw some uh, you know some other stuff uh, had a wonderful time um, learning about the, the Philippines learning about how missions works how missionaries work together and things like that and so it really changed my life uh, and so we came back our third year and that's really when things begin to change for us. So we're gonna we're gonna stop this video because it's getting a little bit long, and we're gonna call this part one of our of the Rice family journey together. So, thank any, you. Any last words? Yeah. What would you like to say at the end of this? It's it's uh, I I'm enjoying this. It's good to rehearse um, your journey and think of the faithfulness of God and uh, through all these years. It's, there's been a lot of hardships. Uh, there's been a lot of awesome things, but through it all, God is faithful and it's just good. I, I'm enjoying uh, revisiting uh, the past and looking at the faithfulness of God. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in the midst of, you know, right now we're at home because of the COVID-19 crisis and having to stay at home that just as God was faithful through all our past years, He's faithful today, and He's faithful in our future. Amen. So we'll see you in part two. Thank you.